Hello and welcome back to the Style and Beauty Doctor here on YouTube and in today's video we're going to be talking about some affordable mineral sunscreens that you can find at Target. I mean you can find them elsewhere as well so keep watching. been trying a lot of mineral sunscreens for dark skin this year. It started as kind of like a, I'm bored in quarantine, let me try some stuff to, and try them out on camera. And you guys seem to like it, so it turned into a whole series and playlist and whatnot. So if you want to see what other mineral sunscreens I've tried, make sure you check out that playlist because there are lots of them. Even some that are under $25 because I know sometimes these mineral sunscreens can feel like they get up there in price. Um, but some of the ones that I, I've liked so far the most have been under $25. So check out that playlist. But then I also have a blog post that kind of lists the, 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 the ones that I like the most so far. That blog post is constantly updated. So bookmark it, but it's not like, a, you know, set in stone. It's constantly being edited as I try more mineral sunscreens. But let's get into to these. Now I got them at Target just cause I was on the Target app and I was just on it and I was like, well, let me see what I can get. So first up the Bare Republic Mineral Sunscreen Face Gel Lotion. Um, I picked this up, it was $17.49, but just now when I was kind of Googling to verify that the price was $17.49, I saw that this um, either temporarily or maybe if, you know, when you're viewing this video, maybe it's still on sale, I don't know, but I saw that it was like $8 and change at Ulta, so I'll leave the links to both in the description box. Um, but this was kind of cool because I was like, oh, a face gel lotion, that's probably gonna be really nice. Um, it's oil-free, it's hydrating, SPF 30, it's water resistant um, up to 40 minutes. The um, filter in here is zinc oxide 18.2%. Some of the, you know, marketing from the packaging, oil-free, non-comedogenic, no chemical sunscreen actives, no parabens, no dyes, no synthetic fragrances. So we talk about the whole no parabens thing. The parabens have found out to be fine, but I think sometimes, you know, once you say something's bad, the damage is already done. So some brands are still, anyway, long story. <laughs> um, and then no synthetic fragrances, meaning that it still has fragrance in it. It's just that they're naturally derived, but just cause something's naturally derived doesn't necessarily mean that it's okay, but just so you know. Going to my notes for this one, I like that this had a nice lightweight feel. Um, it gives the skin a natural finish. So you're not gonna look overly dewy and you're not gonna look super matte. Um, I also like that it felt hydrating, but it wasn't heavy or greasy. One thing that I experienced, and then just now when I kind of looked at the Ulta listing, um, a lot of people are experiencing this as well. So maybe the price drop was because the brand is maybe going to, I don't know, reformulate or whatever, but this does have some significant amount of pilling. Um, so pilling is when the kind of the product kind of like balls up on the skin. Now typically you can avoid clumping with products because it happens with products, not just this one, is to either use products that have a similar base, so water-based with water-based, um, or if you're going to mix bases, um, sometimes it's good to wait, let the product sit and settle for a bit before moving on to the next one. That's a way of um, preventing pilling and balling. But this one was still kind of finicky with the, the pilling and the balling. It's like, how long did you want me to wait exactly, you know? So while this had a lot of nice things going for it, lightweight, hydrating, um, I think it could work on a number of skin types, you know, just make sure you're wearing the right moisturizer on underneath. Um, no cast, and it, 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 was, it was a really nice mineral sunscreen, uh, but the pilling can get annoying. So if you're someone who has like maybe multiple, multiple steps in your skincare routine, um, this might not be <laughs> compatible with that. If you're someone super simple, it, it might work out. But again, you might need to wait in between, you know, whatever you put on, like your moisturizer you put on before this, let that sit for a couple minutes and then put this on. But nonetheless, not bad if you don't do the most with the other products. And it might not even really be your fault, you know? But anyway, next. So next up, the Honest Beauty 
Luminous Finish Tinted Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So I got the deepest shade, which is the deep. This is about $21.99, maybe, you know, a couple bucks more, a couple bucks less, depending on where you get it. Um, this was something that I saw in the, in, in the comments of one of my videos. Someone was like, can you try the Honest Beauty? And I was like, oh, okay, but I feel like it's gonna make me be triggered like the, uh, <laughs> the Super Goop CC Cream. It's not as bad as the Super Goop CC Cream, but she's still not sitting with us at the lunch table or the dinner table or the breakfast table. I mean, there are some positive attributes about this product. One thing that I like is that it combines several steps in your routine. So if you're someone that's kind of looking to, you know, decrease the amount of stuff that's on your vanity or inside of your medicine cabinet, this might be a, a contender provided that it matches your skin. But this is going to be your moisturizer, your sun protection. It's also going to give you some color correction. It's going to help to brighten the skin. Um, now, the color correction is going to really depend on if the color actually matches your skin. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that. It's also got the iron oxides in it, which if you watch my video with um, Dr. Pro Grimes on iron oxides, visible light. Um, if you haven't, make sure you check it out. But like a very, very short clip notes version of it is that you know a recent study has found that um, tinted mineral sunscreens um, particularly containing iron oxides are <sighs> beneficial you got to be very careful with which words that you use very beneficial to those you know Fitzpatrick four through six who have persistent pigmentation issues such as melasma or um, <sighs> aggressive hyperpigmentation when I say aggressive I, I mean that in a sense of like you know, it's not like you get two or three pimples and you have two or three dark spots to fade. I wouldn't consider that persistent hyperpigmentation. Um, but th those in that group that a tinted mineral sunscreen with iron oxide um, is beneficial for that group. So make sure you check out the video so that you can get, you know, the, all the facts and the tea and, and all that stuff. Now the thing, all right, so here's the thing. Zinc oxide is white. That's why you get that like white cast with these mineral sunscreens. And just from like playing with like watercolors or like those paints when we were kids, you know when you mix something white with anything, like even black or, or dark brown, it's gonna look grayish and pasty. And that's what this color looks like, right? Like it, it just looked like they just said, all right, add some brown and eh, mix it up a little bit, we're done. That's what the color seems like to me. It has a nice dewy finish, but it's kind of hard to tell because the undertones are so off on my skin tone. Um, and I would say that you want to apply this in sheer layers until you have enough so that you, you know, get in the proper sun protection because that's something that you kind of have to do sometimes with these mineral sunscreens, especially you know the ones that can be a little casty. To kind of mitigate some of that, you know, you apply it in thin, sheer layers, but you know, layer it up until you have enough. It doesn't have too bad of a cast after a few minutes. Like it, it's gonna look casty when you first put it on, but it calms down after a few minutes. Um, I do definitely think that if you're gonna wear something like this, which kind of defeats the purpose of having an all-in-one, is that you would need to put some sort of makeup on top of it in order for it to look like your actual skin. <laughs> I actually bought the Rare Beauty foundation from um, Selena Gomez's line. Um, and it's actually pretty nice. I still need to like, you know, play around with it a little bit more, but the finish on it, it's you're not gonna get a beat look, but I, I like the finish on it. I got shade 500N, which was like a really beautiful match for my skin tone. When I put that on top of this, it gave me like a really nice skin-like finish that, you know, you're getting, all of the good stuff, the, you know, your mineral filters, your iron oxides. And I was looking in the Rare Beauty Foundation. It says that it may contain iron oxide, so I'm assuming that maybe some shades do, some shades don't. So I wouldn't rely on that if, you know, that's what you're looking for. But I did think that it looked nice. Like if you're someone who doesn't want to really be wearing a whole bunch of makeup and you just like, oh, this, this cast, it's got to go. So I think I thought that was a nice combo. And another good thing about it, it does wear pretty nicely. Um, we are in that part of fall in New York City where it's starting to get cold. So we're no longer in that moderate weather. Um, and it looked really good on me. I have oily skin and it didn't have any, you know, big issues with it wear wise. Obviously it wouldn't be my first choice because the, the color doesn't match and I would have to do too much to get it to match. But 
I mean, not a bad option if it's checking off a lot of boxes for you. And I'll leave it linked below so you can check out the rest of the ingredients and, you know, kind of check mark that against what you like to look for in a sunscreen or a tinted mineral CC cream, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and let's move on to the next one. So next up, the Unsun Mineral Tinted Face Sunscreen Lotion. Um, SPF 30, water resistant, I think that says, I'll put it on the screen because this either says 60 minutes or it says 80 minutes. It's very, it's a very small print. Um, so this is actually Frank Ocean's mother's line, which they sent to me a couple of years ago when it first came out and I was like, wow, Ash, this is incredible. Um, <laughs> I did not enjoy that product and I was just like, wow, hmm. My, my, my. <laughs> but I decided to give it a chance again because it, it's in different packaging. When I tried it, the packaging was like gray or silver or something like that. So I'm like, okay, maybe something changed. Now, a couple of great attributes about this product. It's tinted. You're going to get your iron oxides in this. So like I mentioned earlier, um, with the tinted sunscreens, there's a video on iron oxides, visible light, and how that pertains to persistent pigmentation in skin of color. So make sure you check that out. So that's a plus here with this product. I also have to commend this brand for coming out with a mineral sunscreen from Jump. Um, because when this first came out, I have to say, either I haven't been paying attention really to mineral sunscreens until maybe two or three years ago, and then really going in depth with trying them this year. I have to say, I don't think people were really talking about mineral sunscreens like that back when this came out. And for it to be a line started by someone of color and they had a mineral sunscreen, I have to commend them for that because, you know, people are saying that they wish that Fenty came out with a bunch of mineral sunscreens with the different tints. I can't imagine a brand that's probably attracting people who don't wear sunscreen regularly, trying to get people to wear sunscreen with a mineral sunscreen. You know, that's, that's kind of, that's a little hard. You know, it have, it'll have to be so cosmetically elegant. But anyway, nonetheless, let's, let's get into this. Um, you're definitely going to need to apply this in thin layers. This is not as casty as what I remember trying, but you do have to apply it in thin layers because if you just take a glop and try to blend that in, you, your feelings will be so hurt. So thin layers, but make sure that you layer up enough so that you have the right amount of coverage. I'd say about a nickel sized amount. I'll leave a link below with um, some information on that. The cast is a little detectable. Even after you give it a few minutes, it's not bad, but it's also not good. But it does wear pretty nicely with a, nat a nice natural matte finish. So you're not going to get much sheen with this one. Um, so it can work in your, your routine depending on, you know, the type of uh, finishes you're looking for in your sunscreen. And of course, the type of moisturizer that you're using underneath and the, the season and the, the climate and all those other things are going to factor into if this is going to work for your skin type or not. Now, while this isn't bad, I would say this is okay. Like you're still probably going to need to put something on top of this, some sort of makeup or something to get rid of that cast. Um, but I would say, I would love to see where this brand can go with innovating some more tints. So next up, the Babo or Babu Bo Botanicals <laughs> Daily Sheer Tinted Sunscreen, Extra Sensitive for Face, SPF 30, 100% um, mineral active ingredients and some of the marketing on the labeling, sea buckthorn and hyaluronic acid. Um, it says that it's lightweight and non-greasy. Um, it says that it gives a natural glow. Um, so some good things about this is that it's $15.99. You get 1.7 fluid ounces. It's not, it's not cheap, but it's also not like far out of range. Um, it does have a nice natural glow to it, but how that glow <laughs> looks is going to depend on your skin tone. If you're about my complexion and, and darker, so <laughs> this does have a bit of a cast after, even after you let it settle for a little bit. So you're probably more than likely gonna wanna put some makeup on over it to you know cover that cast. Um, but it's, it's not bad. It's got the iron oxides in it. The formula feels, you know, it's nice and silky. It glides nicely on the skin. So the thing with the texture, it goes, it glides on nicely, but the, the more that you kind of glide on, the more it feels kind of like pasty. 
I would probably apply something like this with a makeup sponge and then, you know, be able to thin layer still and then just kind of, you know, dab it on um, and thin layers and then make sure you have enough layers to have adequate sun protection for your face. You know, get all up in the areas that you need to get all up in it. Um, I would say this is just okay. I mean, it's $15.99. It's not the best tinted mineral sunscreen I've tried. It's not the worst. And if you're someone who doesn't mind wearing makeup on top of it, it it's, it's, it's probably, you know, something decent that you can just grab and use. Next up, the all good tinted sunscreen butter. This is SPF 50 plus. Um, it says it's very water resistant, um, up to 80 minutes. And also it's uh, biodegradable, non-nano. I think, a, I think most of these were probably non-nano, most if not all. Um, but you know, I'll leave links so that you can check that out. Gluten-free, um, the filter here is zinc oxide 25%. I thought it was kind of cool that it came in this kind of tin packaging. Um, and I, it, I'm not gonna lie, it caught my eye because it said it was a sunscreen butter. This brand actually has other mineral sunscreens available at Target and you know, other places. Um, but I like the idea of a butter. It feels really good. Um, you know, like a, you know, like a nice smooth butter. The thing is, I didn't love this on my face. The cast that this left, even after you let it settle for a little bit, is slight to medium, but you can, you know, it's, it, it's casty. You can see that cast. Um, there's iron oxides in this, so that's great. I actually would prefer to use this like on my hands or on my body. I mean, I know it doesn't make sense because it's such a small tin um, and that's so much like surface area, but the tint seemed less apparent on my arms than it did on my face. So um, if that is something that is helpful helpful to someone. Um, also what might be helpful is the fact that it's very water resistant. Maybe it's something that you don't, you, you know, you're going out to run or for a hike or something and you wanted a mineral sunscreen that was water resistant and you know, you don't mind looking casty. So those are some affordable mineral sunscreens that you can find at Target. Leave me a comment below. Have you tried any of these? Would you try any of these? Get all chitty chatty in the comments with your experiences with any of these mineral sunscreens. Now, no, this wasn't a great lineup of affordable mineral sunscreens. Typically, in my experience, I find that most of the mineral sunscreens that are affordable, that are gonna, you know, be a little bit more cosmetically elegant are typically the Korean mineral sunscreens. I've tried a few, so make sure you check out my playlist and then of course check out my blog link to see more. And follow me on social, the links will be in the description box as well and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.